All right, hi. Um, sorry about that bouncy. There we go. I am uh, just going to show you how to do the um, threading on this old sew more. Um, here I have a uh, red thread and oops, <laughs> red thread, and I'm going to show you how to thread this. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that I have this long arm in back and this is important because um, I quilt with this machine and so I use cone thread and see like this oops <laughs> cone thread and the thing is with cone thread or crisscross wound thread um, it pulls differently and therefore it produces a different tension than this kind of a thread this thread is is just wound straight across. And so the these old machines were made for this kind of thread. But because I quilt and I like to use lots of threads that are heavy and etc. And I buy them a lot um, on in bulk in these big cones. I had my husband, well my husband saw my pain and <laughs> made me this. So this is an arm, it's just an extender for my, um, oh, there's the end. See, it's just an extender for my uh, machine here. And I just hook it right over the top of the existing thread holder or post and use a rubber band that I hook from one end from the little port there to the winder over here. And that makes it so that I can use cone thread. Now, um, when you do, if you do make something like this, this is just made out of a hanger and twisted. So it's really simple fix. Make sure when you have such a thing, let's see, you need to put your cone thread directly under your hanger so that, um, oops, so that you get a good draw from the thread, um, from the cone, because otherwise the tension won't be good. So you want to have your tension good. So I just started by threading through the hanger, and then, oh, sorry, and then I'm going to take and begin with this little loopy up here. Any of these kind of uh, machines that have a back, the tension in the back, this threading will be the same. Okay, so now that I've got it through this first loop, put it through between these tension discs. These tension discs um, should look like two metal plates, like this, and you want it to go between those. Okay, and that produces tension, and then there's this little a uh, kind of wiry thing right there and that it goes into that next and then around this arm so this when you see how when it when you sew it'll pull like that and produce the right tension and so let's see so the next part is through this little cox comb or whatever they call that. Um, there. Okay. So you should have that. Then there's a little piece right here, a little coil. You just put it in through there. And then you hook it through next, the little hook next to your uh, needle. And then you thread it in through your needle. And that is how you thread um, an old machine with the tension in the back. Um, one of the great things about this machine, you can use um, great threads with it. You can use any thickness of threads. I use a heavy cotton to, to do through my quilts. And I also use Silco. I also use this 50 weight. Um, but See how these are wound crisscross? Again, 
you have to have this tension arm piece, this, this little doohickey, in order to use these threads that are wound across like that. These ones are what they're made, this old machine is made for. This is the kind I like to use. So we have to have this. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, and that is how to thread an old Soma or anything else that has this uh, tensioner on the back. And there you go. This is the joy of an old Soma. And you guys, I quilt everything on this. I quilt jeans, quilt, thick quilts, thin quilts, and everything. And um, so I want you to see the foot. See this foot? I do not use a walking foot. I just use this. And it never has a problem. It doesn't bunch up underneath or anything. It's just wonderful. Um, but do you see down here the little hole? Um, let's take this off real quick. I want to show you um, how the... right here. Do you see where that bobbin thread's coming out? There's just a little teeny hole. And that little teeny hole allows for the least amount of fabric to be pulled up and down as the machine stitches. And as a result of that, you have a lot of control. Um, and so you're able to quilt without having a walking foot because it only pulls a tiny bit and so it keeps everything flat and wonderful and also this looks like a tabby foot to me. I don't know. Um, this is a fantastic uh, foot because, as you see, it just holds in a little spot. It doesn't try to pinch down a great big wad of fabric. It only pinches in the very area that it's stitching. And this way I get tremendously good control. I get good stitches and I do not have wadding or bunching in the back. Okay. Um, all right, I'll put that foot back on. It's hard to do one-handed. <laughs> Might do that afterward. Anyway, yeah, I'll put that on afterward. Anyway, I hope that helps you. Um, I'll do one on the the Morse next. But that is how you thread the Somar. Thanks. Bye.